And to teach us on this pre or post snowy day, Ed Smith. Good morning and God bless you. I am very thankful to be able to share God's word with you today. We're going to start in the Gospel of John. And I'm going to share on being branded as a doulos and having your will committed to God's word. So we're going to see a couple of exciting things, I think, that uh, I trust will really bless you as it did me as I was looking into this. And we're going to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 4, to start with. First of all, God never overtakes our freedom of will. And I'm very, very thankful for the reality of that, that we have the freedom to choose. We have freedom of will in our life to believe the word or not to. So we're going to start in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 45. Then when he was come unto Galilee, this is Jesus Christ, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came unto Cana of Galilee, where he made wa the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. So this is a very well-to-do man. And yet his son was sick. He had a need. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea unto Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. It's very interesting in human nature that this, this man was a nobleman, and yet he heard great things about Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ's reputation preceded him. And because of that reputation, he went to him seeking to have his son healed. Then said Jesus, unto him let's go back up here verse 47 again and when he heard that jesus was come out of judea into galilee he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death then said jesus unto him except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe the nobleman saith unto him sir Come down ere my child die. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. What I see from this scripture that's very interesting from a standpoint of just spiritual understanding of the scriptures is, is that there, there had to be more conversation that Jesus had with this man. It wasn't just a blank little quick, you know, you know, go away, your, your son's going to be healed. There had to be more to it than that. There was time that was spent there so that this man would believe. And we'll see more of that as we read this record. Verse 51 and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. That's a great, boy, that must have been just a great sound, a great, great news that that man, it just must have blessed his life. Verse 52, then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they sent unto him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So what I want to show here that there was time involved in all this. There was a lot of time. I mean, we're talking about when he got the news that his son amended, it had been in a complete day that he must have just been challenged, and yet he believed. Verse 53, so the father knew that it was at that same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. You know, because of this, his whole house then believed. He changed. There was a dramatic effect of this one instance of being his son being healed. 
verse 54, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Beseda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk and blind halt, of blind halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at the certain season. And this whole verse four is really not in the text. But basically, there was a history that these people believed that if when the water moved, that they were going to get healed. If they jumped, if they got into the water first, they would be healed. So there was a tradition. There was something there that, that caused all these people to be in this situation, in this area. They wanted, they wanted healing. All of them wanted and were tr believing to be healed. They were wanting to get healed. They had a need. And yet only one person Jesus Christ ministered to. In verse 5 of chapter 5, a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. I cannot imagine having to deal with, you know, something for an extended period of time. I got a sliver in my hand and I'm just like in agony for the half an hour or whatever it takes to get healed. I mean, this, this poor man had an infirmity 30 and eight years, a long time to have to be dealing with a challenge health wise. And when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to be put into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. One of the things I saw about this was Jesus Christ gets right to the point. He gets right to the point of, wilt thou be whole? Where's your will? Do you have a will to be whole? And the man gave him a whole bunch of excuses. He didn't really answer the question. Jesus Christ said, hey, do you want to be healed? And this man starts rationalizing and giving excuses. Jesus said unto him in verse 8, Rise up thy bed, rise up, take thy bed and walk. Again, from a spiritual point of view, a spiritual understanding, there has to be an extensive amount of discussion that Jesus had with the man between verses 7 and 8. You know, first, verse, verse 6, Jesus asked him, hey, do you will to be healed? Do you will to be whole? And that word whole is sozo, whole. So there had to be an extensive amount of time of Jesus working with the man between verse 7 and 8 to the point where Jesus could say, rise up, take thy bed and walk. But he got delivered. You know, why wasn't everybody else delivered that was there? Why was it only him? Jesus Christ got the revelation that God was working in him to work and take care of this one man. So we go to verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. He got delivered and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Uh oh, it's a bad day, huh? <laughs> bad day to work on the Sabbath. The Jews thought so. Verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured. So he got delivered. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Verse 11. He answered them. He that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, 
what man is that which saith unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, verse 14, Jesus find him in the temple and saith unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. I think it's great to see how Jesus Christ followed up with the man to find him, to continue working with him, to continue you to bless him. It wasn't just a one-time deal. Jesus Christ took the time to, to make sure that this guy was taken care of. This man was taken care of to be made whole in every facet. And in verse 15, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus. So once he found out and realized and recognized it, he explained to them, who had made him whole. Again, I really am excited about this record just from a standpoint of just seeing the fantastic way in which it's the word of God that blessed this man. He got delivered from the, the power of the word of God and the commitment that Jesus Christ had in operating and functioning and doing the word. Verse 17 of chapter five, we see this at the end, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh and thereunto I work. Jesus Christ did and was about his father's business. So let's go to Peter, second Peter. Chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one, verse one. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that are obtained to them that have obtained a precious faith unto us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Simon Peter, a servant. That word, verse, that word, servant, is doulos. And that's a focus of what I wanted to look at today was just as a branded slave. A doulos is one that is committed and sold out. And we're going to see this. I want to go to Deuteronomy to get a background of this. I know this is real familiar for a lot of you, but it's a good reminder of just the commitment that we can have to God. Deuteronomy chapter 15. We're going to see the Eastern custom of being a branded slave. And we're going to start in verse 12 of chapter 15 of Deuteronomy. And if thy brother, an Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor, out of thy wine presses, of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Thou shalt give unto him, and thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. And the Lord thy God redeemeth thee. Therefore, I command thee this thing today. 
and that shall be if they say unto thee i will not go out away from thee because of the love because he loveth thee and thine house because he is well with thee then thou shalt take an awl and thrust it through his ear unto the door and he shall be thy servant forever and also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do likewise and it shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest him away free from thee for he hath been worth double higher to thee in serving thee these six years and the lord thy god shall bless thee in all that thou doest so the the bond slave this branding was a commitment that was made after six years after once you fulfilled and you got to your seventh year as as a as a slave you were you had the rights to be free and if you decided that you know you loved your master and you decided you wanted to serve your master for the rest of your life then there was a public signification of that where you would get branded with an all through your ear saying that you've committed and you made a decision to be committed for the rest of your life to your master that's a, an, an incredible commitment and and it wasn't a commitment of com compulsion you know the the slave was taken care of by the master and part of this aspect of being a slave and being committed for the rest of your life means that everything that you have that everything that you need is going to be taken care of and that you're going to be exemplified when you walk through your day in your life because you're the slave of your master you know your master is going to so take care of you that you have everything that you need you're going to be well taken care of you're going to be dressed to the hilt you know just from a standpoint of not being impoverished you know that that's the whole aspect of this great custom so let's go back to second peter with that background of being a branded slave being being committed to the master verse 1 of chapter 1 second peter we read again simon peter a servant a doulos of a doulos and an apostle of jesus christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of god and our savior jesus christ so we are and have become douloses of the lord jesus christ through our commitment of accepting jesus christ as our lord and believing that god raised him from the dead uh, believing that god raised him from the dead we now are doulos is for our lord jesus christ we have and have chosen to make that commitment it's a, an incredible commitment of of service and and because of that we know and have the confidence that god's going to take care of us he's you know it's he's made us more than conquerors we're going to have all of our needs met so that we can have the peace let's go to verse two grace and peace be multiplied unto you multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and our lord jesus christ so part of being a servant being a doulos is a commitment and part of this commitment is as being a slave when we make that commitment we get to the point where we are gonna have everything taken care of for us and we get completely sold out there's no if ands or buts about it we're sold out to god and our lord jesus christ verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and our lord jesus christ as we continue to grow in our knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to have more of that grace and peace. That, that peace is going to be multiplied to us. 
verse 3, according to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. There isn't anything lacking. There's an incredible amount of freedom when we are committed to God and his word. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to stumble anymore. I don't have to worry about that. There's just an incredible peace because I know that my father's going to take care of me. Verse three again, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us into glory and virtue whereby are given unto us the exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we're given exceeding and great and precious promises. We've been given those. Well, how many do we know? The more we know, the more we're gonna benefit from those promises. And that we can be partakers of the divine nature, the, the spirit that we have from within, having escaped the corruption. And that corruption is getting worse and worse. It's just getting worse and worse that is in the world through lust. Verse five, and besides this, giving all diligence, you know, after all this, we give all diligence. We, we expend a diligent effort. We keep our minds in focus on, on uh, the, the commitment we've made. Add to your believing virtue. And that word virtue is, is a superior excellence. It's And to virtue, to that superior excellence, and to knowledge, temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and godliness is that true spiritual vital relationship with god and and to godliness we add brotherly kindness you know so we're kind to all we have that brotherly love and to the brotherly kindness charity and it ends with charity which is the love of god so we have brotherly love, but then we also go a step up beyond to having the love of God. Verse eight, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wanna finish with a little statement here in a lifestyle of the believer that Dr. Rowe makes one time. He says, the education and discipline of the mind, according to the accuracy of God's word, is the highest education of all intellectual powers. Man must so educate his will and desire that he becomes a master in the tabernacle of his own being. Tabernacle being our our individual walk with God. He must educate his mind to love good and abhor evil and educate his intellect so that he has a coherent system of true beliefs. It is the word of God that gives us the, the basis for everything that is good and right. And as we continue to recognize our commitment to God as a bond slave as one sold out that there is no if ands or buts we are sold out for the lord jesus christ we will continue to excel in all that we do as we continue to work the word act on the word and do the word that god called us to do so god bless you enjoy continuing to be a servant for the lord jesus christ as a bond slave bless you